Yeah, uh, Himant, once again, can you please confirm? Voice is audible. Uh, yes, you can share your voice. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello all, uh, once again, uh, very good afternoon to all the faculties and principals that have joined uh, for the session, project templates and ideation process. Uh, an Alaythiran project launched by Anna University in association with Department of Information Technology, Government of Tamil Nadu. So, uh, so before uh, I uh, speak on the today's session topics, there is some announcement on like uh, our students are still supposed to onboard uh, the platform and uh, a few students are left out to form the teams and the Sparks are supposed to approve it. So almost 90% of them is done. But uh, since we have a very short time to start the technical trainings, we request one, uh, one last time like principals and Sparks uh, just check whether all your college students have completed onboarding onto the platform, team formation and Spock support, batch selection, and then you're all set for the trainings. Please ensure it. And uh, tomorrow is the last date. We have already informed to everyone. Uh, so by Monday, the functionalities may be also be, uh, you know, not working. So that's the reason we request you all to complete all the tasks by end of day tomorrow. Right. Now let's let, let's come to our uh, topic for today. So project templates and ideation process in the session. So basically, uh, you will be uh, understanding more on how to develop process, uh, project, the process of a uh, design thinking, uh, solution development, project templates, ideation process, and more of responsi responsibilities of a mentor. Uh, now will come into the action. So we will discuss all these things in detail along uh, post which we will also have Q&A session. So we have uh, Mr. Amarinder to convey all these uh, points in detail with us. So I will hand over to Amar now. Amar, over to you, please. Thank you, Tesh. Uh, very good afternoon, Banandal. Uh, Hemant, uh, yeah, I can share my screen. One minute. Yeah, Hemant. Uh, Hemant, please confirm me if that you can see my screen. Yes, sir. The screen is visible. My my voice is audible, right? Yep, but a voice is perfect. Sir. Okay, thank you. So, warm welcome to the Nalaitran uh, projects. Uh, today's uh, session is on project templates and ideation process. Uh, this session has been organized uh, to provide you insights on uh, the ideation process because. Uh, before uh, they get into the actual training and project development, the students need to come up with uh, the, the solution uh, ideas uh, for the, pro the problem statements. So I can say like the use cases which we have provided to you. So let me uh, jump over to the agenda. So today's agenda, we will again recap the project uh, development process. We have discussed this earlier, but I will have a quick recap of project development process. Then we will uh, touch upon design thinking, uh, uh, in solution development, this is one of the important uh, uh, practice which need to be followed uh, in uh, developing the solutions. Then we will discuss on uh, the project templates uh, specific to the uh, ideation uh, process. And uh, we will discuss in detail on what is the ideation process utilizing these templates and uh, what templates need to be submitted uh, post this ideation process. We'll discuss on those concepts. Then uh, we will uh, have a detailed discussion on responsibility of faculty mentor for the next couple of weeks uh, uh, before the actual uh, training gets started. Then we'll have a Q and a session. So let's move on to the project development process. Uh, we have discussed this process earlier also, but let's have a quick recap. So the project development process has been divided into five stages. The first stage is uh, setting up the uh, the requirements like pre fulfilling the prerequisites, setting up the environment, configurations, uh, uh, like setting up environments both on the platform as well as uh, on uh, their necessary computer systems or laptops and other thing. Then uh, the second stage is uh, 
uh, every student have already uh, selected the use case, the business case or the project which out of the 60 use cases spread across different technologies and different business domains. But that use case need to be converted into a proper problem statement. Uh, we will discuss about that process in detail, how exactly we can uh, work on defining a problem statement. Then uh, we will, uh, the second stage will have ideation and idea prioritization. So this today's session is going to be helpful for you to uh, complete this uh, second stage, which is very much important uh, before we actually get into the, the project development. So the third stage is requirement analysis, developing the solution and technology architectures. Then the fourth stage is a project planning, sprint delivery uh, schedules and uh, calendar for stand-up calls. So this is more like a planning and scheduling activity for uh, uh, developing the project. And the fifth stage is actual development of the solution where we will be, uh, the student teams will be coding, uh, submitting their uh, uh, the function like in agile process, they will be submitting the sprints. There will be testing. Then there will be acceptance or review by the, the mentor, faculty mentors, as well as industry mentors, and the approval process will happen. And this is going to be an iterative uh, process where there will be uh, a maximum of five sprints, uh, which will be delivered as part of this fifth stage, which will be undergoing testing, reviewing, approval uh, process in an iterative mode. So these are the five stages in which uh, the project need to be delivered, and every stage has a, a certain uh, evaluation criteria. I think we have already discussed uh, those evaluation metrics in detail. Uh, so today's uh, session is more on the stage two where uh, the student teams can uh, work on the use case, gather the necessary information, define the problem statement uh, correctly and uh, generate ideas uh, uh, by using been uh, brainstorming and uh, collaborating with mentors and uh, the team members they can come up with the crazy ideas and out of those ideas uh, finally they will be coming up with the, the best ideas which will uh, solve the problem so idea prioritization so today's session we will uh, have a more detailed discussion on stage two and it also has some relevant uh, templates we will uh, discuss in detail on those templates uh, specific to this particular stage and uh, the ideation process how exactly you can organize ideation process in your campus also will be discussed in detail okay so let's move on to the the next step uh, design thinking and solution development the second stage which we have discussed the uh, defining the problem statement uh, gathering the ideas and uh, uh, idea prioritization it is link to the design thinking process. Uh, we are going to apply design thinking process to complete this particular stage. Okay. There is a famous saying uh, by Albert Einstein. Um, you can see here, I would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and then five minutes solving it. So if you define the problem properly with all the necessary information, and if you exactly understand what is to be solved, solving doesn't take much time okay so this is how the great uh, the scientists and the people used to do like they spend a lot of time on understanding uh, uh, the problem defining the problem then they will work on solving it because solution development is a straight away activity because you have a uh, uh, the methodologies you have a uh, uh, the, the technology and other things which can be applied and uh, it easily we can develop the solution but are we developing the solution exactly uh, which is solving the problem that is very important so that's why uh, i would like to emphasize more on uh, the first four stages uh, before actually get into the fifth stage of problem state uh, i mean say like project development so the first four stages of project development is very much important in which the second stage is very much important that is where we are actually defining the problem statement and we are uh, uh, brainstorming ideas and ultimately finalizing the idea which need to be taken up further okay so let's spend more time on the, that particular stage and uh, we would like to equip uh, all the faculty members uh, uh, 
all the faculty uh, mentors and even uh, the evaluators and the people with uh, the necessary processes and the tools and the templates so that you can organize that second stage which is the most important stage for the project development in your campus okay so what exactly is the design thinking? I think you must have already attended some of the sessions here and there. Uh, I'm assuming a few of the faculty have already undergone the design thinking training, but let us let me uh, give a basic definition, uh, which is um, taken from uh, different source. So design thinking is a creative problem solving process that focuses on a user centered approach to create a solution that is technologically and economically feasible. So if you split this uh, statement, it's a creative problem solving process. The first uh, the thing which we need to capture. Second, it focuses on user centered approach. User is a god here. So uh, the problem solving, uh, the, the solution development is completely around the user. Okay, so we have to go with user centered approach that rather than the developer centered approach. Okay, we have to in every stage of the development of the solution, you have to focus on the user rather than uh, technology rather than uh, uh, a developer, you know, the skill sets and other thing. Okay, so it's a user centered approach. And the solution, what it comes out of this, it must be technologically and economically feasible. Okay, so design thinking enables uh, the developers to come up with uh, creative uh, solutions which are uh, completely focused around the user and it will also help us to develop a technologically and economically feasible solution for the problem statement okay that's uh, the best thing of designing thinking process and most of the organization and the most of the Applications which you are uh, uh, seeing in your uh, daily lives have a design thinking process inbuilt into it. So before they actually develop that, uh, they would have implemented design thinking processes. Okay. So I have a success story for you people, like just to understand what is the importance of design thinking process and how exactly it can transform businesses and how exactly it will help the, help the businesses. There is a, a study by the Forrester uh, and we have that study survey available on the IBM portal also. I can share the links. It makes uh, the development process three times faster. It brings uh, 300% return on investment and it can solve a lot of problems which will happen in the future, okay? So I have a success story for you. Uh, how exactly the design thinking uh, practice has transformed one of the company which is getting into a bankruptcy to now uh, a billion dollar company, okay? So I'm talking about Airbnb. I, I think uh, you must have heard about Airbnb. Okay, so uh, now Airbnb has gone from making 200 USD a week to revolutionizing tour tourism. Now they have more than um, uh, 15 lakh properties listed uh, across 192 countries and uh, 34,000 cities with a total uh, number of rumors in excess of 40 million in 2015 itself. Now it is even uh, bigger. So they uh, rent out uh, like as a owner i can rent out uh, my property to the tourist okay so i can uh, uh, display my uh, property on airbnb so that it will be uh, given uh, other rent to the, the tourists coming to my city okay so uh, when this particular idea has been launched as a technology solution they could not able to make even a 200 usd a week Okay, so in fact, uh, at a one stage of the company, it would have getting into the bankruptcy stage and the uh, founders were uh, able to take out the, uh, the idea and uh, stop the company. So that was a kind of stage. So you can just uh, look at the story. It's hard to believe that the Airbnb was once making less than $200 per week what grew their revenue and transformed airbnb into billion dollar business lots of experimentation risk and thinking outside of the normal okay so the founders uh, joe gebia and Fall graham uh, the co-founders of airbnb 
Remember going over numerous charts, graphs, and codes with their design team trying to find uh, some clue as to why their growth was nearly zero. So when it was launched, it was uh, uh, like in, uh, uh, from a Silicon Valley uh, with a great uh, uh, the investing agency backing this company. They have developed entire tech and everything, launched this uh, application and uh, just waiting to see what is the revenue coming out of this application. But surprisingly they could make only 200 usd a week so they could not figure out what exactly the problem and uh, now the founder it was until uh, the gavia the founder co-founder began moving through the app like a user now he wear the shoes of the user then he started going through the application as a user and that he realized why no one was wanting to book a stay so when he realized as a user, when he is go, uh, going through the application, then he found a really uh, uh, the problem, which is creating an issue of booking the stay. I mean, the problem was the pictures looked terrible. The pictures captured by the property owners were not uniform. They are not up to the quality. And uh, because of those pictures, the people were not booking the stay in the uh, on an Airbnb. Okay, so without any data uh, to back their next decision, what they did is like uh, Graham and uh, Gavia, the founders, decided to rent a camera, travel to New York, and spend some time with their customers uh, to replace the uh, amateur photos with more professional-looking ones. Okay, so this generally uh, uh, such a scalable application this is not the solution uh, which they have to uh, fix it because uh, capturing the actual pictures using a professional camera it doesn't work across all these cities right so but even if that uh, since they understood this is a real problem they just uh, got onto the ground then uh, they pick up a camera and they started uh, capturing the pictures and they have posted now the professional cameras, uh, professional pictures onto the Airbnb. Now, a week, a week later, their revenue nearly doubled and by taking a risk uh, on a non-scalable solution, this is a non-scalable solution because uh, they cannot uh, jump onto the, like they cannot hire a lot of professional for photographers to capture a picture and post it on Airbnb, Airbnb on behalf of their uh, property owners. It's, it's a non-scalable solution, but still that and, uh, went on to the and uh, started working on uh, posting the actual professional pictures and they have seen doubling the revenue within a week later. So why, why now the from there onwards, uh, the Airbnb success story has started and now they are uh, the multi-billionaire company uh, with uh, 15 lakhs properties listed across uh, 192 countries. So what exactly the solution? Like if you look at here, they could able to find out the problem only when they walked through the application as a user. Okay. In fact, the founder itself uh, uh, became a user and he started going through the application as a user to book the stay. And then only they could able to find out what is the problem. And uh, immediately they have fixed a problem in an agile mode. They could not uh, again go through the data and all those things. They could not uh, uh, like work out a, a great solution, a scalable solution, but they have jumped onto the immediate solution and understood what exactly the problem and they've seen the results okay so this is what the design thinking process is design thinking process if it is implemented in the early stage of the design of the application it gives wonderful results and it will help the developers to build the solution which exactly solves the problem so we call it as a uh, the product the problem solution uh, the fit or uh, product soli uh, the solution fit so are we really developing a, a solution which is uh, solving the problem? In a better way by using design thinking process. Okay. Now let's let's understand uh, what exactly the design thinking uh, process. There are a lot of success stories. Uh, this is one of the story, but there are many uh, unicorns uh, who have seen the results of uh, uh, the design thinking process. And uh, now most of the companies, most of the, the product-based companies, it's now uh, standardized uh, format like they 
apply design thinking process in their development process, not only during the ideation, even in their uh, development and every stage of the application, they apply the design thinking process. Now, what exactly the design thinking process is? Okay, there are different uh, uh, standards available. So there are several variations of design thinking process in use today. Some processes have a, uh, as few as three steps, while others have as many as seven steps. So minimum three steps to maximum seven steps processes are there. But uh, the, the first time the design thinking process was uh, released by, uh, it was defined by Stanford University's uh, design school. D school, a leading university teaching design thinking involves five stages, uh, which is uh, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. So these are the five stages which are involved in uh, design thinking process. And we will be covering up these three stages in today's session, empathize, define, and ideate. So these three stages will help us to create uh, an idea which can be converted into a next level uh, prototype or solution, okay? And uh, these three stages are very important stages for any innovation, okay? For any uh, product development or if you're bringing up a solution which is gonna solve a problem, then this mandatory that you have to apply these three stages to if you're really building a great solution, okay? So even if you are building a, a wonderful technological solution, if it is not uh, solving the real problem, then it's a waste of time and waste of resources. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, before the students actually get into the project development, uh, as a faculty mentor, uh, uh, you should insist them on to apply these three steps as part of the design thinking process. So empathize, define, and ideate. Let's have a look at each and every uh, sub, uh, stage of the design thinking process. So empathize uh, talks more about observing, engaging, and immersive experience of the user uh, requirements. So let's have a detailed, uh, what is empathize? So at this stage, uh, your goal should be like, you should connect to the user stories. You should organize some user interviews. You should understand the uh, user story. You should understand user uh, uh, thinking process, user emotions and uh, uh, user the problems and the user experiences, okay? So connect to the user story, emotions, and uh, you should draw insights about them. So you have to understand the users who are gonna use your application or the, uh, the users to whom you are building a solution, okay? So you need to understand them clearly. You should understand their uh, the pain points and you should understand including their emotions. How does they think about uh, the problem and uh, what is their experience, okay? What is their expectation? Those things also should be understand during the empathize uh, stage, okay? So this generally involves uh, observing, engaging and empathizing with the people to understand their experiences and motivations, okay? So at this stage, you should understand, uh, you should be in a position to define who is the user, and you should understand the user in detail, okay? So to execute this particular process, we have a template. So uh, when, when you organize ideation process in your campus, uh, you would be using a template called empathy map canvas, okay? So there is a template called empathy map canvas. We will uh, walk uh, empathy map canvas so that understand how this canvas or how this uh, template can be utilized in organizing this uh, particular uh, step, okay? So let's have an example, a simple example I have taken uh, for uh, very simplicity. So an empathy map is a simple, easy to digest visual that captures knowledge about a user's behaviors and attitudes. It is a useful tool to help teams better understand their users, okay? Creating an effective solution requires understanding the true problem and the person who is experiencing it. The exercise of creating the map helps participants consider things from the user's perspective, along with his or her goals and challenges, okay? So this particular map helps us to understand uh, the user experience, user emotions, and uh, what is the user perspective of the, the solution? What, uh, 
what is here uh, his or her goals or challenges those things can be drawn out in a graphical way using this uh, empathy map okay so i have just created one uh, a small empathy map uh, this is for buying a tv of a particular user uh, in, in this case uh, jemmy she want to uh, buy a uh, tv okay so and she has decided to buy want to buy a tv so what is her feelings what she does what she says and what she thinks she have to capture all these things and based on this you can uh, map out what is a challenge of jamie and what is a pain point of jamie jamie in buying a tv okay so this is the empathy map so capture her feelings example okay so when she thinks about uh, buying a new tv okay what is her feeling okay uh, is she overwhelmed excited unsure uh, who to trust where to buy and uh, she has a, a fear like i need to spend a lot of money or she may be uh, may not be having adequate knowledge about uh, tv and she is anxious to get a, the bigger tv at uh, her home so these are all her feelings when uh, she thought of uh, buying a tv okay now okay uh, now let's move on to the next uh, what does she do when she want to buy a tv okay generally it's a user tendency they will go to websites checks the websites then uh, she does more research on google or other uh, sites then she will list out uh, different brands and uh, they understand the pros and cons of different brands compare the products and she may inquire with the friends like uh, the she will ask which is the best brand which is the best tv which is a, a tv okay and she uh, also visits uh, some of the stores to understand the prices and all those things then she makes some small decision or she may postpone uh, some bigger decisions of buying the tv so these are the some of the activities by the user okay and the, the what is the case here she want to buy a tv so for that she does this and what does she says when uh, she is going through this process okay so she may be conveying something like what is what size is best for me she may be discussing uh, with her friends is uh, some uh, tv okay so she may ask this question to somebody and uh, she may ask uh, somebody like where should i start what brand do i do you like uh, okay i was expecting something different like so these are the some of the questions generally which we uh, come across with the other people or she may question herself uh, uh, when she is buying a tv okay now what she thinks is also important because it's ultimate see it's an emotion okay the feeling and uh, the thinking process ultimately drives the demo, uh, decisions right so uh, here uh, what does uh, she thinks uh, what else i am missing am i missing any feature uh, which i doesn't know uh am i wasting too much of money on uh, uh, this tv uh, maybe this is uh, this isn't the best uh, option available for me i want something awesome uh, more than uh, this one smart tv with uh, different connectivity inbuilt uh, features and uh, do they think i am a stupid uh, purchasing this particular brand which is not known to the people okay and why is this particular process buying a tv is so hard for me i cannot i could not figure out a right model available in the market and what is best for me so these are the, uh, the various questions uh, which will come uh, uh, in her mind okay so if you this one is uh, the various questions she puts to other people she says this okay and this is her internal uh, thinking process okay so by capturing all these things the feelings and uh, the her activities and her inquiries and her internal uh, thinking process okay these are all things we can uh, get uh, by doing some user interviews uh, discussing with the user and understanding uh, the, the the general standard processes okay and we ourselves can have a certain uh, like a thinking process to bring up all these points okay now once you create all these uh, you know, the points uh, about the user okay you can understand the user in a better way okay so what is user thinking about what is user challenge okay what exactly the user requirement okay what is her problem or her or his problem statement okay so using this empathy map now you have to create a problem statement right 
let's move on to the next step. Yeah, so in our project, we are going to use this empathy map canvas template. So they're exactly the same, but uh, ultimately there is a summary also after uh, performing this. So what do they uh, think and feel? What do they see? What do they do? What do they hear? So, and ultimately you list out what is uh, his or uh, her uh, pain points and what is uh, her requirement in detail? What is her gain? Okay, pain and gain need to be listed out so that based on this, you can uh, frame the problem statement. Okay, so this is a template uh, which is readily available for you uh, for every uh, the project use case. You have to identify the users clearly and uh, you have to work out an empathy map. Okay, so let me just quickly show you the template, how where, where exactly this template is there. And you have to collaborate as a team, like all the student uh, uh, team members should join, uh, should join together to create this empathy map. Okay, now let me take you to the platform. So there is a platform called Mural. Uh, it's, it's a, like we have a free accounts available. And in fact, we have a, uh, free uh, membership available for the academicians. You can apply for Mural for uh, Education. There is an initiative, you can apply there. So I request all the faculty mentors and uh, the student teams to sign up on this platform because we have a ready-made uh, template available here. You can utilize this template. Uh, and uh, as a team, you can collaborate and uh, work out, uh, create this particular template and you can sh download this template directly or you can share this template to, to the mentors uh, and even industry mentors will also go review this particular template. Okay, so you can receive the comments that uh, let me, uh, so everybody, uh, the faculty mentors and the student teams must have uh, uh, account on Mural platform. Uh, so that you can uh, utilize this template uh, and you can uh, in real time you can collaborate and develop this. I'll show you how exactly this template uh, looks like. So when you sign up, uh, then uh, you will have an option called start from this template. I'm in free plan. So in free plan, I can uh, create up to maximum of five templates and uh, the maximum collaboration can happen among five members. Okay. But but uh, there is a mural for education initiative. Uh, you can uh, utilize your institutional email ID to enroll on a mural for education. Then uh, you can uh, uh, onboard more number of students also and you can have more templates uh, available for you. Okay. So this is a template which we are going to use and these are all sticky notes. Uh, you can uh, directly type uh, on this uh, sticky notes or you can do sketching on this uh, sticky notes. So I'm just clicking on uh, create mural from this template. So this is a standard template available for us and uh, every section there is a clear uh, description provided here. So creating a empathy is a quick way to help you and uh, your team gain a deeper understanding of who you are designing for, who is a user. The information you add here should be representative of the observations and research you have done about your user. So before coming to this uh, template, there must be some research happening. You need to understand about the problem statement. Uh, let me just quickly ex explain you. For example, uh, real-time communication system powered by AI for specially abled people. Okay, who is a user here? user is specially able people. So as a user, you have to create this empathy map. Okay, you need to consider the specially able people. Again, specially able people, maybe you can categorize again uh, into one or two people like with a different uh, disabilities, okay? So for each user, you have to create an empathy map. Okay, so take uh, like as a specially able person, you have to think, you have to feel, okay, so or you can have a, some kind of uh, uh, interview with uh, the, such a person or you can uh, understand more from the, the caretaker of uh, these people. Okay, so gather all those information and all those observations. Then 
Okay, so that is the uh, important activity. You cannot directly go to the empathy map and start thinking about uh, uh, like, uh, okay, how, how does it happen? So that will not uh, help you out. You need to do a thorough observation and research, then only come on to the empathy map to list down all your observation in a template format. I'll click on create mural from template. So it's asking, uh, create mural. Okay. Yeah, so this is a navigation. You have a, all, uh, uh, this is a uh, canvas where you can uh, directly edit it. So these are all the sticky notes. So you can directly uh, write, write uh, what user thinks about, okay. So what uh, do the user uh, sees? What do the user says, okay. And so you can uh, like, what do the user hear? Okay, so you can you can have a detailed uh, uh, the guidelines how to fill this information. For example, say plus do, okay, say and do. With your team, write down information about the task your persona hopes to accomplish, as well as the kinds of things they might say. These things should reflect their motivations or tasks when doing their job, okay. So attitude in public, their appearance, behavior towards other, okay? So these are the, the, the things which you need to capture here. So what exactly the, our persona, our user hopes to accomplish need to be listed down here. Then think and feel, what really counts, major uh, preoccupations, worries and aspirations. It's more of emotions and their feelings. So write down how your persona thinks and feels about their tasks with your team, what worries them, what gets in their way, what do they need, okay? So this need to be listed down here. Then next is, what do they hear? What information does your persona hear from peers? This is more like, uh, what do they ask others, okay? So what friend says, what boss says, what influencer says, some of the examples, okay? So this is, uh, they will, listen uh, like uh, the what persona will listen uh, from different peers okay what do they see so what is in your persona's environment what kinds of things are they surrounded by okay so this is what do they see then what are the pain points so what are the challenges your persona faces the, the major challenges need to be listed on the fears frustrations and obstacles need to be listed on and what worries are prostates, what are they afraid will happen? Then gains are more about what does your persona needs to be successful, okay? What are their wants? What are their needs? What is a measure of success for them? Okay, if they feel like they're successful, what is a measure for that, okay? So what does success looks like for them? How do they accomplish their goals? So these are in uh, gains. And of course, you can add a picture of uh, the persona to whom you are believing. Thing you need to remember here is like you should not talk about the solution. Here. You should not talk about any technology here. So you are not at all discussing, not at all bringing up any technology or any uh, solution which you are going to deliver. So don't come with that mentality as a developer, as a solution provider. So you just think as a person, what exactly our user is. Uh, like like actually is feeling about the problem okay what is a pain for him okay uh, how, when can he feel happy what is his success measure for uh, the the uh, the happiness and the, the, the if uh, that pain need to be taken out what is a measure to be taken okay so those things need to be clearly defined here we are not talking about the solution we are not talking about the technology stack here okay i think uh, we have, i have seen uh, in fact my personal experience in most of the hackathon when we do ideation process the students will directly jump into the technology okay they will directly uh, talk about the stack okay i will use ai uh, this algorithm to solve this problem no that should not be okay so we have to talk more about uh, uh, the user, uh, the pain points, and what is the user success, okay, in this particular uh, empathy map. Uh, 
you can invite the teams. You can see here, uh, there is an option for uh, inviting the teams, manage mural members. So I'm the owner. Uh, uh, so we request all the team leads who are part of the team. Uh, so team leads to create this particular mural. Uh, so team leads need to create an account uh, and uh, invite other team members to this mural, okay? Including the faculty, a mentor assigned to them, okay? So manage mural members and I can uh, invite the people. So I can input the their email ID or I can directly share the link so that they can join, okay? So what is a permission also we can give? So we can give a permission of uh, view only permission or edit or no access, okay? So that uh, those permissions also can be set up on the platform itself, okay? So I can invite my, uh, the colleagues, or team members to this particular mural so that uh, we can join together on a Zoom call or something and start uh, filling the information uh, into the empathy map canvas. Okay, now this is the template. Now they, they can start uh, adding uh, the things here. Okay, I can see like, uh, I can simply type uh, so, the solution here, typing is possible. You can sketch if you want to sketch like, okay, this is uh, the uh, solution and other things. So they can use sketching option here, okay? Then uh, they can also uh, have some pointers or uh, some other ways. They can lock it, lock the object so that they can, nobody can touch it. They, even, they can even, even share that's just only one, uh, uh, a sticky note to the users okay right so this is how they can navigate on the template so the first uh, template need to be submitted as part of the uh, solution development is uh, submission of empathy map canvas okay so this is empathy map canvas uh, before completing the empathy map canvas the students teams need to work on uh, uh, the requirement, they have to do some literature survey, they need to understand our user requirements, understand user stories, user emotions, and come here and create this template. Got it? So hope I'm clear. Now let's move on to the, the next uh, step of uh, the process. Okay. Yeah, before going there, after finishing this uh, template, they can uh, export it. There is an option uh, to export one minute yeah so here you can see export export as a pdf or export as a png or html uh, that is possible and you can uh, add all content or you can do selection uh, which content need to be saved uh, shared that can that is possible exported is possible here okay so we uh, recommend all the uh, team uh, members and the faculty members to export this template as a pdf and this pdf need to be uploaded into the GitHub repositories of the students. So the empathy map canvas of that particular project need to be available on the GitHub repository. Okay, that is a mandatory thing. Uh, every student teams after completing the empathy map, uh, there, there can be one map or two maps because uh, there can be multiple users also in their application. Okay, so uh, it can be one or two, depending upon their uh, user application, okay? All the empathy maps need to be exported as PDF and those sh things should be made available in uh, GitHub repository. So please uh, keep a note of this. It's a mandatory thing because as part of our evaluation, the technical uh, skills uh, evaluation, there are uh, four marks provided for empathy map uh, canvases, okay? So the evaluators will be uh, reviewing this empathy map canvas uh, and uh, accordingly, Okay, upload the map as a PDF file here. Right, so uh, even uh, like when uh, they are working on this particular empathy map, students can uh, chat here itself. There is an option called chat option here. Uh, student can chat and uh, work on this empathy map. Our faculty mentor can also join this uh, team and he can also provide uh, the feedback to the students uh, directly here itself. Or uh, later it can be commented like, uh, 
you can ask your student team to share this link uh, and uh, you can uh, review this map and uh, provide the comments here itself so that uh, later students can reply back to your comments or apply the, the modifications onto the template itself. Okay, so it's a great collaboration tool and uh, with a readily available templates and these templates are very much needed and it will statements in a better way. Okay. So I'm just summarizing uh, all the team leads uh, uh, must uh, create a mural account. They have to uh, create this template, uh, then uh, invite all the team members, including the faculty uh, mentor and uh, work on this template, export it as uh, the PDF, upload this into the GitHub uh, repository of the project. Okay, this is a must. Yeah, thank you. So let's move on to the next step. Uh, so we have done with the empathy map canvas. Uh, this gives a fair understanding of uh, user pains and user gains. Okay, user gains are basically the how a user will be happy. What is the success measures of the user? Pains are basically the challenges, obstacles, and other thing. And you can also understand the emotions of the user about this particular problem statement, right? Now let's move on to the next step of the, the design thinking process is the defining the problem statement. This is very much important because without defining the problem statement clearly, you cannot develop the solution, okay? So what is the goal here? The goal is analyze your observation about the user and synthesize them to define the core problems you have identified as a problem statement, okay? So when you work on empathy maps, you may come across multiple uh, pain points of the user, okay? So uh, you may come across uh, different uh, uh, emotions and thinking process of the user, okay? But let's assume you have got some uh, 10 uh, problems of the user and out of 10 problems, there will be some core problems. If you solve those core problems, then other problems will be automatically solved or other problems may not be uh, that important because uh, the core problems will automatically uh, remove. After analyzing uh, uh, the like analyzing uh, the observations about the user you have to synthesize and finally find out the core problems you have identified uh, identify the core problems uh, as a problem statement okay now how to create a problem statement that is very important you cannot simply write it in a simple uh, english language there should be a template or format need to be followed to create a, a, a problem statement okay so let me just show you the problem statement uh, format. So, so this is a general format which need to be followed to define every problem statement, okay? So you should write the user, who is a user? And what is a need? User needs a way to do something that addresses their needs so that the user benefits directly, okay? So we need to fill who is a user, what he needs, uh, to do like what is his need that need to be written here for what he is uh, uh, doing this okay so basically um, what to solve what he, this is needed okay so this three step process is very much important to define every problem statement even if you just write down up to this that is not the clear clear problem statements you have to clearly write who is the user, what is the need and what it uh, gives to him, okay? What it, how does it helps him uh, in solving his problem, okay? So the user needs a way to do something that addresses their needs so that the user benefits directly. This is how to be listed out, okay? So after uh, performing the thorough analysis of uh, empathy map, canvas and after understanding the challenges and pain points of the user you will list down all these problem statements in this format okay that is a mandatory step and it has to be uh, included in the the next template i will explain you okay so and i'll give one more example also for the problem statement definition so this is how you have to define the problem statement so here you can see Sam is a business manager who needs a way to integrate healthy eating habits because he doesn't want to feel like he's on a diet. 
okay so for example if you cut down the problem statement up to this level what happens sam is a business manager who needs a way to integrate healthy heating habits if you cut down up to this automatically many dietitians will come and uh, they will uh, give a diet plan okay so you eat only uh, one time a day you eat fruits you like they will come up with a different way of uh, addressing this problem but that is not actual need of the sam actual need of the sam is like he doesn't want to feel like he is on a diet okay so that is the miss out this insight you will end up with giving a solution which doesn't fit the requirement okay so that's why when you formulate uh, the problem statement it has to be very clearly defined in a way that you understand the user emotions user intentions and uh, you draw the, those insights then only you define the problem statement this is possible only if you complete the empathy map canvas okay otherwise you will miss out the most important information and that will ultimately create a great technology solution but it will not help solve the the purpose of the user right so for every pain point for every uh, the need which is listed under the empathy map you have to define a problem statement and out of all the figure out which is core problem statement which need to be taken up for the solution development okay and this if you solve this core problem statement uh, if it uh, resolves 80% of the uh, uh need of the user then go ahead with that particular core problem statement no need to give focus much on other problem statement which are very uh, uh minor problems or uh, needs of the user okay so this is a stage uh, very important stage uh, most of the the teams uh, i think i have seen in uh, most of the hackathons uh, they don't define the problem correctly because their focus is more on the technology their focus is more on the outcome of the technology solution rather than uh, uh, the problem statements okay that's why in the beginning itself i have mentioned out of one hour spend 55 minutes on defining the problem and one min uh, five minutes on solving it okay so this is one of the important stage uh, in developing the solution clear problem statement can only help us to develop the perfect solution for the problem okay is uh... there is a methodology we call it as uh, uh, the five w's of the problem okay a problem statement often touches on the five w's who what where when and why in fact uh, 5w plus 1h also added 1h is a how okay so who what where when why and how of the problem if you can able to understand that then you can uh, define the problem statement perfectly and these are possible when you complete the empathy map canvas okay when you does empathy map canvas you will get all these uh, answers who what where when why of the problem or how of the problem can be drawn out uh, in the empathy map canvas so in other words um, where and when does the problem occur who or what does it affects how does it uh, affect them uh, here is some more information regarding each of these initial questions okay who does problem affect okay who does problem affect the specific group organization or customer who is that uh, who is getting affected by the problem okay so you need to list down all this uh, group ultimately these are the personas these are the users to which you have to create empathy map okay so what are the boundaries of the problem so is it the organization level or is a geographical level or is a, a particular segment of users okay so you need to have the boundaries for the problem what is the issue so what is the impact of the issue what impact is the issue causing what will happen when it is fixed what would happen if we don't solve the problem okay so these are all basically uh, user emotions when you ask these questions to the user you will get answers automatically and which will be captured in our empathy map okay so when does the issue occurs when does it need to be fixed where is the issue occurring only in certain locations or processor or products or etc 
why is it uh, important that we fix a problem? Okay, so what impact does it have on business or customer? What is uh, the success if we fix this? Okay, so what impact does it have on all stakeholders? Okay, so we need to have this 5W, um, uh, five w's of the problem so that uh, you can uh, have a better understanding of the problem and better understanding of the user okay so while performing the uh, while filling out the empathy map canvas you bring in this uh, methodology of implementing five w's if you're implementing this five w's you can uh, fill the empathy map in a perfect way because ultimately these questions need to be uh, connected to the user group okay so then they can, you can get more insights from the user and ultimately fill out our empathy map correctly. And uh, from the empathy map, now you can uh, identify the pains and gains of the user and so that you can easily create a problem statement. Okay, so hope this is clear. Uh, I just touched upon uh, uh, what is uh, the, the problem statement, uh, how, do, how exactly you have to define the problem statement and to define the problem statement correctly, uh, how five W's are going to help you out to create empathy maps ultimately to the to create the problem statement okay now at this stage uh, you have come up with uh, the problem statements there will be some uh, one two three four five six problem statements now you need to uh, get into the next level that is ideation okay you know the problem now now let's uh, consolidate ideas like you have the team now so get the ideas from uh, the teams okay now let's move on to the next step brainstorming ideas and idea prioritization okay so what is your goal here this is where you engage in unfiltered unrestrained brainstorming okay so be um, i'm emphasizing on these two words unfiltered unrestrained brainstorming and this is a uh, and again i have seen uh, this problem in most of the hackathons when they do brainstorming the teams are not open to the crazy ideas so they restrict themselves to a boundary and start ideating so that will not help so you will not get out of out of the box uh, ideas when you restrict your boundaries and when you keep technology in your mind when you uh, like think in a technology solution uh, like so keep aside technology keep aside uh, uh, the processes and other things just come up with out of the box ideas okay so how can we solve this obstacle that is only the the question you should have you should not uh, think about uh, okay i can only solve this obstacle with artificial intelligence if you think in that way then you will end up with only artificial intelligence uh, uh, technology based solutions here okay so that should not happen uh, because same problem can be solved with a simple mechanical system okay uh, same problem can be solved with a simple jugad so if you don't uh, entertain the ideas, uh, the open ideas, uh, uh, with, and if you are putting a filter of technology or something, then uh, you cannot uh, come up with the best uh, idea for the problem statements, okay? So that's why uh, engage in unfiltered, unrestrained brainstorming, okay? So there are certain rules uh, of brainstorming by IDEO. This is the organization uh, who does a lot of... Uh, uh, activities around design thinking and they have built a lot of content uh, around design thinking they also have their own framework okay rules of brainstorming defer judgment encourage wild ideas this is uh, the crazy idea should come from the team don't don't discourage them okay this is not the idea which will fit okay this is something funny so don't don't uh, uh, bring out uh, such a kind of comments or criticism when you are uh, ideating. Let's floor be open for any kind of idea, even if it is a crazy idea. Let it be. Let it go into the template. Okay. So build on uh, the ideas of others. This is also one of the uh, important things. Let's uh, assume there is a uh, already something is worked out, really helping. Now we can also build something on top of that. That is also possible stay focused on the topic and this is where uh, like people will just uh, go beyond the topic and they will start thinking something else and it will become a chain effect okay and ultimately they get into some other topic which is completely away from the real uh, uh, the problem statement which we are going to attack so stay focused on the topic 
right? One conversation at a time, people should not uh, talk, multiple people should not talk. You give a chance to one person, let him uh, explain his idea, then move on to the next person. Don't, don't counter uh, immediately when uh, one person is talking. This is very important because we are just brainstorming ideas. We are not judging, okay? We are not judging which idea is good or which idea is bad. So you are just listing down the idea. So one conversation at a time. Be visual. Uh, don't just uh, discuss orally. Uh, write down on a paper or in the form of a sketch or in the form of a simple text. So it should be visual. I'll explain uh, like there is a template which we will use uh, to capture these ideas. And go for quantity. Okay. So at this stage, don't focus more on quality of ideas. Okay. So focus more on quantity of ideas. In fact, uh, in uh, industry, uh, there is a template called Crazy Eight. Eight ideas in eight minutes. Okay, that is a mo model we followed in the corporates. So they give a template called Crazy Eight. So in eight minutes, they have to develop. Uh, they have to write down eight ideas. Okay, for example, ten people are sitting in a room, and in eight minutes, uh, you'll get uh, eight eighty ideas kind of thing. Sorry, uh, in, uh, like if they give 10 minutes and uh, eight ideas from uh, each member. Okay, right. So uh, quantity is important here. Quality is not important. Okay, quality, you can judge it later. There is a next uh, step called idea prioritization that will, uh, where we will filter out the ideas. Okay, but before that, the quantity is important. Let the floor open uh, for all the ideas whatever maybe it may be crazy idea uh, just list down okay so okay now next move on to the other step okay so brainstorming ideas and idea prioritization here we should not apply any filters or uh, any constraints and put the people under any boundary okay let the people come with an open mind open uh, and then let the people come up with the open uh, the out of the box ideas okay and uh, but yeah i agree we have to stay focused on the topic we should not uh, completely go beyond uh, out of the topic right yeah so there is a template available for us uh, this template need to be uh, submitted for uh, every problem statement i'm i'm uh, once again repeating out of uh, after defining the problem statements if you, if you come across let's say four problem statement for every problem statement you, you have to create this particular template okay so for every problem statement there should be some brainstorming of ideas and grouping of ideas and prioritizing the idea okay so let me move on to this template so you can see here uh, in terms of step define your problem for every problem statement we uh, as a team the ideas need to be generated then uh, this idea needs to be categorized into different uh, categories and uh, out of those idea we have to prioritize them based on the feasibility uh, feasibility can be uh, uh, i think if you remember in the beginning uh, in the design thinking definition i have mentioned uh, two things one is uh, technologically and economical feasibility so whether that idea is feasible or not that uh, based on that and uh, other thing is how critical is that idea is like whether it is solving the core problem or uh, non-core problem okay so how important is that um, idea is there okay so based on these two things you can uh, prioritize as you move this side okay so uh, we, we will discuss about this in detail okay let me take you to the template again uh, we will go to the mural so in mural uh, you can just uh, if you go to the product there is an option called templates so you can just search here brainstorm so brainstorm and idea prioritization template okay so you take this template so then i'm start from this template so it's a bigger template it has uh, multiple uh, stages so if you look at here 
brainstorm and idea prioritization. Use this template in your own brainstorming session so your team can unleash their imagination and start shaping concepts even if you are not sitting in the same room. So they can collaborate uh, uh, sitting in uh, their uh, homes so and they can start uh, doing this activity. Okay. So uh, the typical time, like 10 minutes to prepare, one hour to collaborate, uh, two to eight uh, people recommended to do this activity, okay? So before you collaborate, uh, there is a preparation, like uh, a little bit of preparation goes a long way with this session. Uh, here is what you need to do to get going. Team gathering, define who should participate in the session and send an invite. So you can, you can have to create mural from the template. Okay, then you have to invite all the people. Uh, okay, share relevant information of pre-work ahead. Okay, so before uh, getting into this and brainstorming, maybe uh, you can, uh, like the team lead can uh, inform all the team members that, okay, so and so time we will for that you can uh, come up with some of the ideas uh, on your paper so that it will be easy after coming here to list down everything, okay? Then set the goal. Think about the problem you will be focusing on solving in the brain. So which problem statement are we going to attack? That need to be clearly listed on. Then learn how to use a facilitation tool. Use a facilitation superpowers to run a happy and productive session. Okay. So there are some uh, tools available, but anyway, so it's not mandatory. Now the next is define your problem statement. So what problem are you trying to solve? Frame your problem as a uh, as a how might we statement. Okay, so I think I have already uh, shown how might we, this will be the focus of your brainstorm. So five minutes, how might we solve this problem? Okay, so key rules of brainstorming, I think uh, I have discussed already. Stay in topic, encourage wild ideas, defer judgment, listen to others, go for volume, if possible, be visible, okay? Right, so you have done uh, like define uh, like which problem statement uh, need to be solved. You have listed down. Now let's get into the brainstorming. So give 10 minutes, list down all the, the person's name, uh, add the person name. You can just edit here. I'll uh, just go to editable mode. Yeah, so this is a preparation work. You can uh, write down uh, the names of the team members including the lead and faculty mentor if it is also involved. Okay, so for every uh, person you have a uh, sticky notes. So whatever idea they get, that idea need to be written here. Okay, every team member can add their ideas uh, parallelly in 10 minutes. It's a collaboration way. So they can add their ideas uh, under their names, right? So let's say 10 minutes or you can give a, even more time if based depending upon the, the time you have availability in the session, right? So once you gather all the ideas here, now the next step is important, uh, grouping the ideas, okay? So like after gathering ideas, some ideas will uh, fall under, uh, let's say a technology area, some ideas will fall under uh, um, solving a certain area of the, a certain pain point of the user, okay? So based on that, you have to group the ideas. So grouping the ideas, like take turns sharing your ideas while clustering similar or related nodes. So based on the similarity, okay, uh, what the, exactly they're solving. So you have to categorize a similar ideas into different groups, okay? Or related nodes as you go in the last 10 minutes. Give each cluster a sentence like label. You can give a, a label for each group, okay? Uh, if a cluster is bigger than six sticky nodes, uh, try and see if you and break it up into smaller subgroups, okay? So it is better to have uh, six ideas in a, uh, a particular group, right? So you have to group all the ideas based on the similarity, okay? Right, you have to list down like, let's say uh, you can use uh, like, I, I'm just putting, okay, uh, idea one of Amar and idea, uh, six of uh, Yuktesh are uh, similar in nature, okay? So define a name here. This is uh, basically uh, some kind of problem. Okay, it's solving. Um, 
pane one. Okay, some some uh, label you can give. So what is the similarity? So based on that, you can define a label and uh, put it here, and you can uh, change the color also. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Amar. Yeah, okay. I just got a offline message. <laughs> so it's doubtful. <laughs> right. Yeah, we are following. Okay. You can define different colors also. You can change the colors uh, for each group. Okay. So that it will be uh, visually uh, useful for you. And this idea uh, can on, not only in text format, even they can uh, use uh, draw something on the, the uh, sticky note uh, to represent their idea. That is also possible. Okay. Now you get a uh, different categories. Okay. Uh, let's assume here uh, you have uh, almost like eight. Uh, in our case, it is a maximum of four. Let's assume four uh, members, four into six uh, sticky notes. So let's assume everybody has given six. So, so 24 uh, ideas you have generated. Now these 24 ideas need to be grouped into different categories, okay? Uh, based on the similarity of their idea, right? So once the grouping is done, then the next step is, uh, important step is a prioritization of the idea, okay? So what is the prioritization? So your team should, all be on the same page about what's important moving forward. Place your ideas on this grid to determine which ideas are important and which are feasible, okay? So now from each group, bring those ideas onto this prioritization grid, okay? So where you have two option on x-axis, you have feasibility. Uh, feasibility uh, includes, uh, you can see here, regardless of their importance, which tasks are more feasible than others, like in terms of uh, their costing, in terms of uh, effort, time, complexity, okay, and technological uh, possibility and other things. So cost, time, effort, complexity, based, uh, don't look at importance, but uh, based on this, you bring out ideas here, okay. Then the based on importance, if each of these tasks could get done without any difficulty or cost, which would have the most positive impact? So which has a perfect fit for the problem without keeping cost and other things into consideration, okay? Or without any difficulty or without, sorry, I'm, uh, so if of each of these tasks could get done without any difficulty or cost, which, would have the most positive. That means you will move towards this side, okay? Now, based on that, automatically the ideas will be grouped, okay? So high feasibility and high importance, there will be something, okay? So, right? So based on this, you will prioritize and you can have a categories. So once you fill up this uh, grid, you will get to know which is the, the best idea need to be taken up for the prototyping, okay? So this is a step uh, which will complete the ideation process. And after completing this, you have to list down top three ideas which need to be taken up to the next level. And these top three ideas can be further brought down, further uh, discussed with your mentor, uh, faculty mentor and industry mentor and identify the best idea need to be taken out, taken up as a solution. Okay, so this is how uh, the ideation process need to be organized at the campus. Utilize these templates and uh, organize uh, the ideation uh, event uh, in the campus, okay. So again, same thing, you can export after finishing this, you can export as a PDF and this PDF need to be uploaded into the GitHub repository for the review purpose, right? So going back again, so we have done with ideation process, we have come up with ideas, then uh, we have identified uh, which are the best ideas, we have prioritized based on the feasibility and importance of the idea, okay? Next stage is going to be uh, the prototyping, okay? so. I will touch upon the prototyping, but uh, there is a, again, we can have another session on uh, creating a solution architecture and technolo technology architecture of 
um, ideas. So I think we will have another session uh, because it needs a good amount of uh, discussion, both in terms of uh, how to create solution architecture and how to create a technology, technical architecture of uh, uh, the idea of what we are thinking about. Okay. So, but I'm just giving some uh, the basic understanding, like how should you prepare a prototype for your project or product? So here, uh, one important concept of uh, uh, MVP, the minimum viable product concept need to be brought out in prototyping. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I have jumped into the next stage. So up to third uh, step, we have done with ideation. Uh, we have done with the brainstorming. We got the ideas. We have prioritized the idea. Okay, now we are getting into the next stage. That is that idea need to be converted into a prototype and eventually into a product. Right. So now we are discussing how to convert that idea into a working prototype to convert that idea into a working prototype. Uh, generally in product companies, they follow methodology called MVP model. So minimum viable uh, product model. Okay, so they don't, uh, they don't uh, develop entire uh, solution at once. Okay, instead, there will be MVP based delivery, uh, which will be happening here. So how does a solution will be delivered to the end customer, end user? Okay, so if you look at this, there are two ways it can be delivered. The first one is, uh, uh, if you look at here, like uh, the, the, the prototype, what we are going to build here is, stop example. So the requirement here is uh, to build a, a moving vehicle uh, which will uh, transfer a person from uh, destination A to destination B and which will have a proper controllability okay so that uh, uh, it can move from uh, A to B without any accident and which will uh, uh, give the proper uh, the journey feeling to the user okay so that is a requirement right so if it is followed in this format, the first format, uh, if you look at here, the methodology followed here is not MVP model, okay? So there is a delivery, okay? First, uh, like let's say assume uh, one year is defined for this particular, uh, or 10 months is uh, given for this particular uh, project. And out of 10 months, if the company uh, confirms that, we will deliver this uh, project in five milestones. So. So if we don't follow MVP architecture, okay, MVP model of delivery in the first, like if you take this as an example, the first one, in the first two months, we will de develop a wheel. In second two months, next milestone, we will develop wheels with the axle. Then the third, uh, okay, we will put a like platform on those uh, axles. Then we will build the body then we will build the internal engine and uh, the steering and all those things. Ultimately, you're delivering the product, but user is not in a position to use your product only after 10 months, okay? He cannot test it before that. It's not possible because it is. it cannot uh, drive him from destination A to destination B. That is a need, okay? He cannot uh, test whether the product which we, uh, you have developed is uh, helpful for him to fulfill that need or not. So if, at the end of the 10th month, if the user feels this is not the requirement, then entire effort, material, manpower, time, everything is gone, okay? So that's why uh, when we are innovating or developing a new product, we follow MVP structure, minimum viable product structure, where every deliverable or every sprint or every milestone we deliver, it will at least fulfills some percentage of the user requirement okay so if you look at this model after two months we are delivering one product uh, called uh, a simple skateboard yes it's also purpose it will uh, uh, take care of uh, moving the person from destination a to destination b okay but what is missing is the controlling capability and uh, the user uh, requirements like sitting position and all those things are missing. But the core problem of uh, transferring the person from A to B is solved in uh, the first MVP itself. Okay, it may not having luxuries, it may not be having seat uh, to seat and other thing, but it's uh, attacking the core problem statement. Okay, that is most important here. Now, after two months, 
company has delivered uh, another product with proper control option okay so here user has to control with his legs but here there is an option uh, uh, here a scooter a small scooter with a, a bit of controllability is given to here but this also solves a core problem destination a to destination b he can uh, travel and he can tra travel with bet better controllability here okay but he cannot go a very speed uh, uh, higher speed and uh, you cannot uh, uh, have a better mechanism to drive it okay but it is solving the core problem and adding additional feature on it right now next uh, mvp he has added uh, the chain system the fiddles and he has developed a cycle so with a better control he can now we can go uh, higher speed and he can sit there is a seating facility available but still he has to depend on his own uh, the muzzle power right so, but now the next MVP, he has put an engine. Okay, now no need of uh, human effort. Uh, even he can go for a higher uh, speed, but the only thing is it's open and you need to have a balance. Uh, you don't, doesn't have a, a luxury here. Okay, right. And the final MVP, he has delivered a car with steering and a cover. You can sit and uh, yeah, ultimately it is fulfilling all 100% requirements. Now you see here, there is one important thing which we need to, understand at every stage the user is experiencing is uh, the, the experiencing the product and he will give feedback to the developer okay so that is very important okay the feedback from the user if it comes early we don't end up uh, investing a huge money time and effort in delivering a wrong product okay so that's why when uh, the project is developed the project need to be planned in mvp model and it has to be delivered in agile mode so that at every stage the faculty mentors and the uh, the industry mentors and uh, will uh, give, put on uh, put up their own thought process and uh, give the feedback to the the team so that it will become a better uh, project okay so I request all the faculty members to educate uh, your student teams on MVP architecture. Uh, and I'm not talking about MVC architecture. It is a minimum viable product uh, model of delivering the projects. Okay, So they have to include this MVP uh, uh, model in uh, delivering their projects. Okay, So this is possible only if they understand core uh, problem statement. Okay, So they have to start from the core problem statement and add on uh, other features which are necessary uh, for the user right so this is how the prototyping need to be done then after prototyping then the testing every uh, sprint or mvp that you deliver uh, that need to be tested properly and again it is an iterative process so that uh, you can uh, make your uh, product efficient and uh, as per the requirement of the user okay so empathize define ideate prototype and test right and during the prototype also you will get a uh, feedback from the user because you are delivering it uh, to the user which will be again uh, getting into the idea so there is an iteration here uh, from test you will get a lot of iteration this iteration may go up to defining the problem statement also because you may have delivered uh, something which is not solving the problem then obviously user will give his feedback and uh, you may have to redefine the problem also that's why defining the problem statement is a very critical activity if you define the problem statement perfectly then automatically these things will come, fall in line okay so test can reveal the inside that define uh, problem statement may be correct or not test creates new ideas for the project because uh, while testing the project or uh, product user may come up with his own ideas so those ideas can be again um, or uh, requirements can all again uh, go through the ideation process okay and sometimes even uh, this may end up uh, to the empathize also because if you don't empathize uh, or if you don't wear the shoes of uh, user and uh, automatically develop the prototype if it is not at all uh, suitable for the user again you have to go to go here to the empathize so this long uh, iteration is always uh, it's a failure way of uh, delivering the product so iteration should be maximum up to here not even uh, to the redefining the problem statement so it should happen at this level only so that you will deliver the product on time and uh, with a proper effectiveness and uh, efficiency right so this is how need to be uh, your uh, solution need to be done uh, de delivered and uh, 
ideation process need to be happen and uh, you have to utilize the templates uh, which are available on mural okay now there are some references available for you uh, i think uh, you must have heard about this uh, ibm has a, a separate uh, page on uh, ibm enterprise de design thinking process let me just uh, go there uh, you have a good uh, information available for you and even ready-made toolkits are available for you so that you can use those uh, toolkits So I request all the uh, faculty mentors uh, to complete uh, the course here, ibm.com slash design slash thinking. There is a course called practitioner course. So it's a two hours uh, practitioner batch. Uh, it's a self-learning uh, way you can uh, finish off. So a very self-explanatory model of uh, understanding the design thinking process okay so try to complete this practitioner batch so that you can recommend this uh, like you can uh, understand uh, the insights of this uh, the design thinking and uh, uh, mentor your uh, student teams then um, there are there is a toolkit also here the similar toolkit which i have mentioned uh, to you so you can uh, let's say how to synthesize a research okay for example, students have uh, uh, gathered a lot of information. So as I mentioned, uh, after gathering information, they have to use empathy maps and uh, ultimately create need statements. Okay. So basically it's a reflecting and synthesizing the research. And there are some other uh, templates also available. But uh, as part of our uh, standard requirement, uh, I have already shared empathy map canvas need to be submitted and uh, uh, the problem statement list need to be submitted in the template, uh, the standard uh, format. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we have to submit the brainstorming ideas and idea prioritization template. So this is for your reference. Uh, maybe you can uh, have a look at it. Uh, the good information is there. And uh, of course, you can get a badge also. If you complete this practitioner, you will get a practitioner badge. So, right. Then uh, let me go to the another reference. So there is a good video of one of our uh, video with a practical example uh, of uses of design thinking. Uh, so uh, this is uh, again IBM, by IBM uh, skills. Okay, so one of our uh, exercises there. Maybe uh, students can, you can share this with students. Uh, like it's a very clearly given like how to create empathy map, how to create need statements and how to, to the prioritization okay basically it is there up to uh, creation of uh, the broad defining the problem statements right so uh, i request all the faculty mentors to go through this video also and uh, share this video with your uh, student student teams right so just uh, and up the so responsibility of faculty mentors. Understand the project templates. Please uh, work on these mural templates. Uh, go through the templates uh, thoroughly. Okay, so create your own accounts on mural. Uh, access those templates. Uh, do a hands-on uh, navigation and other thing. So play around it. Okay. Then uh, ask student teams to gather the necessary before uh, getting into this ideation process. Uh, students need to do a literature survey. Uh, so ask students team to gather the necessary information about the project use case, like uh, going through the technical papers, uh, white papers published by the companies, research publications around uh, that particular uh, problem statement, as I would say use case, and uh, similar uh, products, uh, if uh, some solutions are already there in the market, so they can uh, go through the specifications of those products. So they have to do this uh, survey uh, before uh, getting into the uh, the, the the ideation process. So once they collect this information, uh, then uh, organize an ideation session uh, in the campus with students, where they have to create uh, this empathy uh, map canvas. They have to define the problem statement. They have to brainstorm ideas and ultimately finalize idea top three ideas which need to be taken up as a solution further. 
Okay, so faculty mentors need to ensure that uh, this uh, these steps are uh, taken up uh, at the campus, right? Yeah, that's all. Uh, uh, I think uh, this particular uh, session will help you out in uh, completing the the most important stage of the project development process, that is uh, ideation and finalizing the idea. Okay. And uh, we will uh, share this uh, video uh, in your dashboards. You can uh, refer back this video in your dashboards. And uh, I request all the faculty mentors to go through those templates which are mentioned. And uh, we will share uh, those template links also uh, in the dashboard so that you can uh, refer back. And we will also share those template links in uh, uh, your Rocket Chat channels. OK, thank you so much. Uh, I think it's a long session. Uh, Yuktesh, over to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Amar, thank you so much. Uh, that was very much uh, in insightful session on design thinking. Uh, so I believe faculties and a uh, few principals, those who have joined, for sure must have got good learnings out of uh, this session. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, so obviously uh, faculties must be having a lot of questions on it. We'll give some time for them to go through it and then you can always... Uh, uh, come back to us on any uh, questions uh, through the chat support but for now we have our q a session if you have any questions uh, you can uh, put your questions in q a and again once again i am uh, you know reminding all uh, spocks mentors right uh, ensure of your complete college students completed the uh, team formation Right. We are still yet to receive a few more students from your colleges. That is all because of some mail correction stuff. So ensure of those things have got resolved. Uh, by tomorrow, we are closing the uh, you know batch selection and team for approval, team formation, uh, you know, activities, functionalities. So before that, before end of day tomorrow, please complete the task. So that only we could able to start our actual technology trainings and for you all faculties we are also we are conducting a couple of more sessions in coming week uh so which uh, something related to ibm academic initiative portal and uh, ibm cloud accounts creation uh, training calendar so you all you all are supposed to receive the training calendar for all your students uh like actual technology trainings when are, when from when we are starting like you know what, what's the joining link like you know which students will join in which batches as such right we will enable you on all those things coming week so stay tuned uh, for uh, communication from our side so minimum two to three sessions is what we are planning for you all next week so please uh, stay focused and try to join them as well okay so floor is open for questions uh if any questions uh, uh, you can please put in q a a uh, couple of questions, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> okay, they're answered. Mural is used for project development. Uh, I believe Mural is for uh, design thinking practice, right, Amar? Yeah, it's a collaborative tool which is which has uh, multiple templates. Uh, generally, when they are planning a product development, uh, uh, as a collaborative tool, they can uh, use uh, different templates. Uh, not only at the design stage, even uh, even in, during the project development stage, also there are different templates are there. So it's a collaborative tool where they have a collection of templates. Great. Most of the product Thanks. companies they use uh, the Mural uh, platform for their uh, product development activities. All right. Uh, how to get into our dashboard? Uh, is this is Spog? So basically, if you have registered, your principal must have approved you, you so that you uh, must have got credentials to log in into dashboard. <clears throat> okay. There is a question. Can we have multiple problem statements for single use case referring to multiple stakeholders? Yeah, there are chances, uh, but uh, ultimately the core problem, there would be some core problem. We need to work on that core problem rather than uh, uh, completely creating a diverse uh, solutions for different use cases. So. Uh, if you look at the the use cases which we have given, I think uh, most of the use cases will have a uh, the, the problem statements uh, which are overlapping. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so someone is asking, can I send uh, responsibilities uh, and the links as a brochure? Yeah. So whatever uh, has happened, we will uh, share all uh, in a collected format. Uh, and upcoming uh, sessions as well, we will do that uh, in, 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 in one go. In one shot, we will try to send it to you by Monday. The student is going to uh, mural platform. Yes, actually, student teams can collaborate on mural platform uh, to work on these templates. Uh, so so that uh, it, it is going to be a great experience for them also. And in fact, faculty mentor can also join uh, the team and uh, provide the comments and uh, or it can be part of the ideation process also if needed. OK, so students are going to use mural uh, platform or uh, if it is not flexible or is there any constraint, the same template can be downloaded and uh, the blank template. And uh, if needed, they can uh, do manual uh, uh, listing also, but it is difficult to do it in a simple A4 or A3 page. Okay, so we recommend platforms so that uh, they can uh, fill out entire information, then uh, download from there itself. And it's a uh, the free plan will support up to five members team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, can I create my own? template so uh, we are making the template standardized so that uh, for the evaluators it is easy uh, otherwise uh, uh, they cannot evaluate it properly if uh, people will go with uh, their own template so that's why we are making it standardized uh, so we request you to use only the templates which we have mentioned and it covers entire uh, necessary things yeah yeah uh so, so the first students need to get into uh, platform. Yeah, I think we are organizing one more session for students, right? Uh, like this. Correct. Yeah. correct, correct, correct. So uh, faculties, you don't have to uh, really worry on explaining these things to students. Obviously, the same uh, session we are conducting for your students on coming Monday. Post uh, that session, you can sync up with your students on this uh, design thinking hands-on uh, so that it will be easy for uh, both of you. Yeah. Uh, there is a query. I think uh, it is a process query. Uh, Heman, please keep a note of uh, this query from uh, Banumati, ma'am. Yeah. Fifth student they have added, it seems, Heman, but it is not reflecting. Keep a note of so, it and please uh, contact them. Yeah. Sure. Any field visit which will help to go on next level clearly? Yeah, I think uh, uh, maybe I think based on the locality, Vijay and Anand can uh, help out. So, uh, Balakrishnan sir, I think based on the college where exactly it is located, uh, we have our uh, team members who are uh, visiting the colleges, but again, it is uh, based on the geography and availability, I think. But if you have any query, another thing, you can immediately reach out to us and uh, we will connect and uh, try to resolve it. Yeah. How to add mentors to batches? Yeah. Uh, um, that's, yeah. Yeah. The functionality is up now as, as Spock uh, can assign uh, mentors to batches. Faculty mentors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, mural account, GitHub account should be created with institutional login email ID or by, yeah, students can use their uh, personal uh, login IDs. So there is no restriction that they have to use institutional login uh, email ID, okay? So they can create with their own uh, personal email IDs. To do the above course, we need IBM ID, is it so? Yeah, so you should have a basic IBM ID. Uh, so it's a straight using from your uh, general email ID, you can create uh, IBM ID. No, I'm sorry, uh, Iktish, what is the question? Uh, to do design thinking course, a uh, couple of hours course, which you have shown, right? So do we yeah. need IBM ID for that? Yeah, I think uh, it's, if they have IBM ID, it will automatically log in, but I think they need to 
it so yeah so so basically uh, with your personal email id you have to sign up into that respective link so yes. that itself helps you in creating ibm id okay. so your 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 personal id will become ID, ibm id that's what i mean to say yeah. uh so, during the brainstorming sessions can other team members collaborate on moral just to add versatile thoughts towards the problem statement selvi ravindran sir is asking uh, during the brainstorming sessions can other two team members other yeah, than team members yeah, of course uh, of course of course uh, but that's but what the, the limit is, is limit is 5 in free account yeah. limit is 5 yeah okay. so minimum is four of the team members so the fifth one may be uh, any student or spark uh, can be joined Uh, can the templates be accessed any time? Uh, yes, yes. Only during the allotted sessions. Uh, no templates can be accessed. It's on mural platform, so they can access the template any time. Oh. But it is better to have a backup uh, whenever you complete the activity. You can uh, export it as a PDF. Okay. So just to keep a right. backup. Yeah. Right. With the batch members allotted in same branch mentors, mm, what what does this mean? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, where is the question? No, are you are you going in a sequence like this? I'm not finding the questions. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. No. Even I just read and. Uh, Uh, let's go in a sequence right okay so otherwise we'll miss out okay correct 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 yeah. i'm going in a sequence only uh, okay so i'm uh, ramya after team approval and mentor assigning only four members in team received confirmation email and mentor details fifth member in team didn't receive any email please clarify this so hemant can you take up this fifth member after adding uh, they haven't received any confirmation email So I think uh, a fifth member may be added after uh, adding the four four members. I think uh, after, I don't know. Like the, the, we need to understand the case. Maybe you can connect correct. separately. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Ramya, ma'am. So uh, please elaborate your question in Rocket Chat. We will connect back to you. Uh, one of our college team wants to change the project title. Uh, that is not possible. Uh, Dell. uh can you please post use cases recordings in mentor dashboard uh, okay yeah so it's, it's, yes it's, it's, these are available uh, in the student dashboard as of now the orientation sessions uh, uh mm-hmm. meant to say so swati ma'am is asking for the recordings of orientation sessions to be made available in the mentor dashboard um i think uh, it can be enabled uh, hemant we need to check the feasibility maybe we will come on uh, come so again so if on not uh, amar if not on the uh, faculty dashboard but at least we can share the uh, recording links right yeah links can maybe we can immediately share the links um, mm-hmm. as a pdf yeah. uh, in the the rocket chart channels okay so hemant right. uh, try to work on that immediately but we we'll, later we'll see how uh, can we bring yeah. it on the dashboard okay sure we'll do that whether they are going to use uh whether they are going to use in their projects uh, uh sindil kumar sir i think the uh, question is not clear yeah, yeah. is it about so, uh, templates or uh, i'm not uh, getting the question if you can elaborate away it will be helpful all right uh can i oh, need explanation of practical and training session Mm. no you uh, yeah i think i went little down no 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 <laughs> let's go in sequence uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, field uh, balakrishnan sir asked field visit like product development or anything to any industry for students or mentors uh, no sir it is not uh, there uh, included in the knowledge and project maybe uh, uh, the field visits are not included yeah So for one uh, batch, only one empathy map has to create, or four. Uh, it is going to be. 
uh, one or two it is based on the users actually like how many users are there uh, or how many personas are there in your uh, use case based on that uh, empathy maps need to be created but it has to be created as a group not individual uh, students okay so empathy maps can be more based on the number of uh, personas in your uh, uh, use case okay it is not based on the number of team members okay okay uh how to add mentors to batches one uh, oh, yet missing out <laughs> yeah so what is the mark allocation of each uh, template yes uh, we have a uh, the detailed mark sheet uh, i think we we will be sharing that mark list uh, which includes a uh, mark for every template and against uh, uh, the main evaluation metric we will share that uh, the pdf uh, soon two it department students of our college two it department students of our college university college in nagargal has not received correct login credentials so hemant i think uh, maybe connect uh, with banumati ma'am i think yeah so university university college of engineering nagargal okay if possible try to connect and resolve the issues huh? yeah. So to do the above course, uh, we need uh, IBM ID. Is it uh, so not necessary? Uh, you can uh, register with your personal email ID and complete it. Yeah. The pra uh, I think Gansi uh, Ma'am is talking about the the practitioner badge of design thinking. Okay, you can do it with your uh, personal ID. No need of IBM ID. How to add mentors uh, to batches? The functionality will be enabled soon. Uh, you will get notified. rocket chart is not enabled in my dashboard i think uh, yeah same ma'am uh, yeah i think you need to connect uh, hemant i think ma'am has uh, many questions yeah okay so i'll do that after yeah. this call new mentor is registered using given link uh, and assigned a team to them but we have no option to delete previous mentors and evaluators details from the dashboard please clarify so mm -hmm. we have we have not provided the delete option in the list right uh, hemant yeah. yeah the delete option is not there uh, as per the internal discussions we had uh, so after 28 uh, we'll get the list from the ict team who has to we have to delete and then we have to delete them okay so we'll look on So during the brainstorming session, can other than team members collaborate with the Kalvas tell the arts members? Yeah, I think uh, just yeah. Uh, so 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 this student uh, the session we will provide for student also. I saw some question uh, for is this been provided for fact, uh, students as well. Yeah, as I already said, Monday the same session is going to happen for students. Uh, okay so on the mentor allocation i have already conveyed uh, spark has to do the assignment uh, mentors to the batches okay mm, whether we need to send again the new mentors and evaluator list to ict academy mail uh the so new mentors new evaluators straight away they can register from the home page of the website uh, and your principal has to approve it like the way how you all have uh, registered new mentors also have to register so the principal should approve it accordingly they'll get credentials they should log in and that's it they are on board okay should have the mentor screen the template for all teams uh, i don't know whether this question is addressed uh, should i have the mentor screen the template for all teams uh, yeah so every team has to submit these templates it's mandatory but mentor is not going to create it uh, the team itself uh, one team lead is going to uh, enroll on mural and uh, they can uh, use that template but uh, it's if then 
Team template can be downloaded uh, in an offline way and they can uh, do a manual filling of it. It is also possible, okay? But we are following that standard template. Okay? So they can use that standard template either offline way or online way. So it's up to them, okay? But uh, after filling the information, that template needs to be made available in the GitHub for the evaluation purpose. Okay, so... Nirmala, Nirmal Prithviraj is asking, sir, in our college students' teams are formed, mentors are assigned for those teams, but evaluator options are disabled. In yeah, so evaluator option we have not yet enabled. Uh, so that we will do uh, sometime next week. Once if it is done, we will uh, let you know. Okay. To access the video tutorials in the dashboard, but fail to access what should they do? So which dashboard i think all the videos are there in the student dashboard uh sangeeta priya uh, ma'am so it's not there in the faculty dashboard uh but uh, we will share the recording links with you all but for students it is there all, every other video whatever the sessions have happened are made available in students dashboard. but if any specific student is facing problem maybe you can uh, send the information in the rocket chart so that we'll resolve it yeah can you please explain how the attendance is calculated for this project we have selected saturday morning and tuesday evening batch, but the sessions are coming in all the day uh yeah actually um uh, these are the common sessions actually uh, we are organizing uh, but but uh, this is for faculty session but going forward for students uh, we are going to have these sessions in the selected slots uh, uh, because we have not got into the proper uh, the, the training calendar. So actual technology training and project development activity is going to happen in uh, specific batch uh, timings only. And it is going to be a separate classroom for the selected batches. Okay. So the training calendar will be uh, enabled to the students uh, soon. Okay. So whatever sessions we have organized so far, they are all common sessions. And these sessions will be replayed uh, uh, between uh, the the selected starts so slots and we are making these uh, sessions available in the student dashboard so that uh, during your uh, like for example if you have selected a slot on uh, tuesday 9 uh, to 9 am to 12 pm then uh, you can uh, ask your students to watch these videos uh, during that time okay and accordingly you can uh, mark the attendance from there so these are the common sessions so we are ready to start the technology training which is going to happen soon and uh, the attendance of technology training session and project sessions are also be taken up uh, soon <laughs> right uh, okay can you please summarize the work of mentors during this week? Uh... Yeah, so we request all the mentors to communicate this uh, ideation process uh, to the student teams. Uh, if the teams are already formed and already uh, worked out the uh, selected their use cases, we request uh, all the faculty mentors to uh, provide them direction towards uh, ideation process. So they have to start working on uh, collecting the uh, the necessary information about their use case, uh, cal cal capturing the research publications and some white papers, technical papers. So they need to understand more about their use case uh, in this week and start, uh, I think you can also schedule the ideation uh, process uh, in between, like based on the timings. So this ideation process has to happen parallelly, okay? So, like you need to guide the students uh, to complete the ideation process before the actual uh, project gets starts. They should be ready with the the problem statements and the final idea to be implemented before the actual uh, project gets starts. Okay, and uh, of course, Shiktesh, we are gonna share the training calendar, right? Once we, I think tomorrow is the last date for uh, assigning Correct. the batches and the team uh, team assignment to the batches. So, post that we are gonna share the entire calendar which includes the training calendar uh, as well as uh, the project development calendar. Correct, but we will do that uh, only if 100% of students uh, uh, approval is done. So there are some colleges, Amar, like uh, so, so, so faculties uh, in your college, let's say 200 students are there, you have given that data to ACT Academy, uh, Nine University. So we have received that and that's how uh, we have sent uh, 
uh, onboarding details to them. So out of 200, like two or three student email IDs are wrong. So we have sent that communication also to all the SPOCs a uh, couple of weeks before. For each college, like four students, seven students, like their email IDs are uh, mentioned wrong. That's the reason they haven't got the uh, login credentials. So, and most SPOCs are corrected the student email IDs with the help of alternate email ID option, but still few SPOCs of few colleges are still supposed to do that. So as, as long as 100% of your, all your students uh, that selection is not done like all teams have not approved so your college will be in hold so we will you will not be able to get the training calendar details so that's the reason we are requesting you to just give a final check of last five ten students of your college right any challenges are there in regards to the email id corrections and all find out and ensure of all hundred percent students are completed the batch uh, like team formation approvals and all <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have few more questions. Uh, so, so there is a question whether student is going to uh, mural platform in their project. Also, they are going to use some other platform. It's compulsory to do in the same platform. Yeah, we request you to uh, use a mural for this uh, engagement uh, because uh, we don't want to have a uniformity for the evaluation process. So. Uh, we, that's why we are recommending to use the mural platform. But uh, if there is a constraint at your end, uh, but at least template what is uh, shown, uh, the same template need to be submitted, even if you are doing offline or if you are using other platform, the template need to be submitted in the same format in the GitHub. Okay. Okay. Uh, questions on student transfer. Uh, so all students are selected, but one, uh, sorry, uh, form teams. A student got transferred to our college. How can we add that student? Because we already entered all the teams and approved by Spock. So uh, if one student gets transferred to other college, so what is the? Yeah, maybe uh, there, there can be, uh, we can receive an email uh, stating that information and that can be taken up with uh, an university and, then, and we will decide on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, transfer, de transfer student details, you can send uh, in an email. But other than that, ensure of all students uh, complete the uh, team permission. Okay. Uh, so can we, can we allocate, allocate ECE department to CSC department students? Yeah, of course, it is possible. It's uh, again a uh, decision need to be taken by Spark and internal uh, departments. But there is as such on the platform, there is no limitation. You can assign uh, uh, if mentor is onboarded, means uh, is treated as a mentor. So it's possible on the platform. <laughs> Right. With the technology sessions also will be replayed uh, so that if students have missed, they can catch up. Uh, technology sessions, in in fact, uh, they're going to be made available as uh, uh, videos. Uh, so students can uh, access those videos at any time. So as soon as they complete a technology session, immediately we will make that uh, video available in their platform itself. Okay. So in the student dashboard, it is going to be there. So they can watch those videos at any time. But just to add, uh, Amar, so yeah. Anna University uh, clearly mentioned the attendance has been, Correct. Uh, like, you know, we will consider only if the student attend the uh, live session Correct. in the respective time slots. The, for the knowledge sake, they can go through it and uh, view the re recording. But if they have to claim attendance, they should join the regular sessions. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, great. So, no open questions. We have answered almost all questions, and we are also uh, on spot time. So, thank you all, uh, faculties, for your pa patience, time, couple of hours spent on holiday. Uh, so, we will again uh, saying request you to ensure of hundred uh, percent, you know, work has been done from your side and student side, and uh, stay tuned for a uh, couple of more sessions we are conducting uh, coming uh, next week and conducting sessions before the actual training delivery starts. So, training delivery dates also we will let you know uh, probably by Monday, Tuesday like that. Uh, we have come very close to the actual training delivery. So please stay focused on further updates from our side. Thank you so much. So thank, thank you so much, Amar. Uh, any final words from you? Yeah, thank you, Kitesh. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, we need to send out uh, detailed uh, the responsibility chart for the faculty mentors. Uh, we will share, we'll compile uh, the responsibility chart for a faculty mentor during this en entire uh, the 15 weeks engagement. Okay, so I think that will give a more clarity on what exactly you have to done at every stage. Okay. 
So mm -hmm. thank you so much. And um, we look forward for a great collaboration uh, on this particular project. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank have you all. Good. Thank you, team. Thank you all. Have a Bye. good day. Bye. Hemant, you can close. Thank you.